Hey everybody. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show how to switch out the uh, air shaft, or you know, increase your travel here. So this is a Fox uh, 36 fork, and it was set up at 160 millimeters of travel. And we're doing a frame swap uh, from a Yeti SB130 to a SB150. So we wanted to bump that travel up um, there to 170. So there's a little identification code there on the back of the shock there and you can just type that into Fox's go to their tech support and fortunately there wasn't any information available but we'll work around that so anyway the tools we need a 10 and a 15 millimeter socket I've got a little lower uh, shaft release tool big old 32 millimeter socket for the air cap uh, we needed some PTFE infused 5 weight oil and 20 weight gold fox oil definitely want to have a shock pump to do this uh, so anyway remove the brake first off it's a little handy little hack there a little tip put some Presta valve rings on to kind of hold everything together uh, so what you want uh, one little another little tip what you want to do first is before you let the air out check the uh, air pressure that's in there currently so you know if you're working on somebody else's bike you'll know exactly how much to put back into it um, but when you do let the air out one little tip um, let it out kind of gradually and let that negative air pressure equalize as you're letting it out uh, this one had quite a bit of grease on the air shaft and it the negative spring was pretty well fully fully uh, compressed there so it had to it took a bit to s cycle it out and basically get that to where we could remove the the uh, air shaft there but anyway a little uh, it's a little two millimeter hex key and then you can remove your little rebound damper knobs uh, just make sure to there's a little wavy washer there between the uh, on that the outer ring it fits in just like so so just be mindful when you're taking that apart that thing could just fall out fall on the ground you'd never even notice it but that's how it goes together there uh, so anyway uh, we're just gonna break loose our bottom nuts there it's a 15 millimeter on the damper side and 10 millimeter on the air on the air spring side uh, so we're gonna just take those all the way off there's some Sometimes the uh, little crush washers will be stuck up in the nuts, or sometimes they'll stick down onto the bottom of the lower fork leg there. So, um, yeah, you can see as I'm taking the the air spring side off, it it really the air shaft really just sucks up into the fork there. So just a um, had way too much. I just didn't bleed off the negative air when I let all the air out. So I had to basically re-inflate the shock to where I could get the air shaft all the way to the bottom and then you could you could hear once you extended it all the way you could hear the air equalize so I would gradually just let out a little at a time until the the uh, air the air shaft there was there the the shaft itself was just pretty neutral maybe sticking out a couple inches and you could move it easily then you'll want to remove the the clip that holds the air shaft in but anyway got the little lower removal tool so that's the way to do it if you have one but if not I didn't have one for the damper side so I just used a 15 millimeter the socket I used to remove it um, ideally you want to use a 6 point socket not a 12 point so it doesn't mar up that aluminum nut there so you're going to be careful aluminum nut aluminum thread so um, usually just takes a couple smacks until that thing is freed up there um, and then from there you can just pull your lowers off uh, there is quite a bit of oil in there so I'll usually pull them off just a little ways to let the oil drain and just had a bucket of our dirty grease rags there I'll usually just drain them off into that you know you can use a if you're doing quite a few of these a bigger bucket you know that you can recycle or whatnot um, but yeah gradually just lowered it down and had it to where it was pointing vertically drains out pretty nice but anyway this is the new the air shaft there the 170 version there so that's what it looks like just FYI um, 
I'm going to go ahead and remove this the top cap there that holds the the valve so see it's got one air the spacer volume spacer there so I didn't get this basically there's I didn't I couldn't you know hold the do the work and hold the camera so basically it's just a matter of popping that little ring there's one little flat side so if you can get a small screwdriver a little pick under it pull it out and then just another small screwdriver pick and just not you know pull it out of that groove once you get it out of the groove the, the air shaft just comes right out so yeah you can see how much slick honey was on that one so it was, I think it was kind of clogging up the uh, the little bypass uh, gate there or whatever to let the negative air easily switch over so this one I've got it lubed up that seems I don't know to me like an appropriate amount of slick honey I don't think it needs to be dunked in the in the bucket there but uh, so anyway yeah you just want to push that in as far as it'll go uh, you'll feel it basically stop and then you're there's a little uh, groove there um, where that little ring fits um, so I just yeah this is just one-handed pushing it in holding the camera with one hand and pushing it in with the other so it I mean it's not super hard to get in there you'll feel it kind of click into place but you definitely want to make sure it's all the way in there um, before you finish your assembly or inflate the uh, the chamber there so uh, yeah you can see it's all the way in there you may if you're unsure just push on it a little bit with the edge of a screwdriver or something make sure it won't go any further so this is uh, this uh, website I typically will go to um, for oil volumes is biketechtools.com and you just type in your fork model and it gives you the the uh, oil volumes so doing three millimeters in the top air spring went ahead and bolted the cap back on after that and now we're ready to put the lowers on uh, it's a good time to do your lower service replace the seals and all that um, so put a little slick honey on the seals there to make those nice and easy to slide on you know, and this part can be a little tricky you want to just take your time and don't force it you don't want to damage your your wipers there uh, so just work that on and then uh, once you get it slid on there you're ready to add your oil to the lowers uh, so where is 10 milliliters of the gold on the uh, air spring side and then we had 40 milliliters of the PTFE infused five weight on the damper side uh, so yeah once you get those on you can slide your lowers um, slide your lowers all the way back on and uh, once you get that exposed you'll see the see the two ends pop out there so just you want to put your crush washers back on um, put your nuts on and then uh, these uh, uh, Fox the torque spec calls for 50 inch pounds which uh, just convert it over to Newton meters it's about 5.65 Newton meters, so yeah, you want to be careful not to over over torque these because it, you know, like I say, it is aluminum shaft parts, and then you got the nuts are aluminum as well. So yeah, you definitely want to go go easy on the torque on these. Uh, if you got a torque wrench, that would be ideal. Um, so yeah, from here, you're just after this, we're gonna put our uh, put our rebound damper knobs on. Um, you know, if you're doing damper service you, you want to kind of count where the the clicks are and the knobs so you can return them back to the uh, original position there if, you know if at all possible these I just made sure not to mess with them or turn them or anything there so they are basically right where they were to start with uh, there's a little flat on this where this pinches up against there so just make sure you're on the flat there um, yeah now all left to do is clean everything up get all that greasy handprints and all the excess uh, fluids slick honey whatnot get that thing nice and clean it's just like I say isopropyl alcohol does a pretty good job for cleaning all this up 
and just got to put our dust cap back on put the wheel on, or put the brake on put the wheel on get that adjusted and uh, then we're ready to air it up and go so got to air it up here and you got to cycle it probably 10 or 15 times you may notice the first time it tops out real heavy and that's just because there's no air yet in the negative air chamber so if you cycle it through it'll it'll charge up that negative air chamber and you may want to you know, if you get it feeling pretty good, make you know, recheck your air, top it off a little bit, and yeah, then you're good to go. Put your little Schrader valve cap back on, and it's all, it's all good to go. So anyway, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I've got all kinds of tutorials and whatnot. So anyway, yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching.